Welcome back to My Smart Learning. Uh, this is a lesson about energy and it's designed really for the year nines because the year nines are missing the lesson this week on energy, but it can be used for year seven. Uh, but it's really designed for GCSE as well. So for year nine, 10 and 11. So energy, the learning objective then. So energy, what is energy and what does it do? So that's the focus of this lesson. Some of the objectives we need to, what we're going to learn about this lesson, the ways in which energy can be stored, how energy can be transferred, the changes in energy stores that happen when an object falls, and the energy transfers that happen when a falling object hits the ground without bouncing back. So the first question though, starting this new topic on energy, what is energy? What actually is it? Now here's a really strange thing. The definition of energy is the ability to do work. So what does it actually mean, the word work? So in everyday language, when we use the word work, we tend to think about our job. So my work is to teach in school. Your work, your job, would be to be students to, to learn. So this word work in everyday language means something completely different. It tends to mean something arduous, something difficult, something that you just don't want to do. However, in, the, in physics, in, in science, the word work means energy. And the actual definition then, work done, any work being done in the universe is energy being transferred from one place to another. So this is a very key point, really, really fundamental. Work done is energy transferred. And you get exam questions based on this, where in one particular exam question, it may ask you to calculate work done, which we'll do in a, in a lesson uh, further down the line. But the, the question might ask you in the following question, how much energy has been transferred? Well, actually, it's the same thing. So if you calculate work done, then the energy transferred is exactly the same thing. So energy transferred is work done. Work done is energy transferred. And the unit for energy is joules. And you might see kilojoules, so kilojoules will be a thousand joules. So one joule of energy is one newton meter. So the amount of energy transferred is one joule. Now, energy then, so coming back to actually, coming back to this um, idea of what is energy, this ability to do work. Well, what does that actually mean? So, well, anything that happens in the universe whether you walk up the stairs, whether a match a matchstick is struck and it's giving out light, anything that happens in the universe requires work to be done. So anything that happens, you know, something moving from place to place, work is being done on that object, so energy is being transferred. So anything in the universe, anything actually happening um, is work is being done, so energy is being transferred. So it's a bit of a difficult concept to get our heads around. But what forms of energy do we have? So these are some of the forms of energy that you sort of learn about at GCSE, uh, sorry, at Key Stage 3, and then we take it further when we look at the energy stores and energy transfers. So what forms have we got? So we've got heat or thermal energy. So that's the obvious thing. So heat is, does what it says on the tin. So heat, anything that's hot, anything that's giving out warmth, anything that's giving out heat energy, that is heat energy or thermal energy. But we'll come back to them. They're not exactly the same thing. So I'll come back to those uh, further down the line. So anything that feels warm will give out heat energy. My, my coffee will give out heat energy. So these pictures should tell you anything that's moving. So the, the academic word or the technical scientific vocabulary we use for moving energy, anything that's moving, is kinetic energy. So kinetic energy is any object that's moving from one place to another place uh, requires kinetic energy. Uh, we've got nuclear energy. So nuclear energy is anything that comes from the nucleus of an atom. So the nucleus of an atom has protons and neutrons, and they're all held together with this special force, this nuclear force, but there is nuclear energy in there. And when we release that energy, we call it nuclear energy. So from the sun, for instance, the sun's light energy and the heat energy that's coming from the sun uh, is because of a nuclear reaction happening inside the sun right now. So hydrogen uh, nuclei being fused together to form helium nuclei and that's releasing nuclear energy 
and the famous Springfield power station uh, in any nuclear power station, when we fuse nuclei together or when we split nuclei, so nuclear fission would be when you split nuclei, it releases energy and we can harness that energy to generate electricity and, in, and nuclear uh, bombs, okay, so atomic bombs and also nuclear reactors for like, powering submarines. You can release energy from the nuclei uh, splitting, so we call that nuclear fission. And in the future, hopefully one day in the future, we'll have uh, reactors with nuclear fusion where we join them together, just like what's happening in the sun, we can release the energy from there. Sound energy, anything that give, makes a sound, anything that we hear, it's sound energy, that's pretty straightforward. So you need some kind of vibration to release sound energy. Light energy, it's pretty obvious, anything that gives out light is uh, light energy. And anything that stores energy and that can be released uh, from its chemicals is known as chemical energy. So for instance, in your car, you're filling up with petrol or diesel, uh, we'll have chemical energy stored in that. And when you burn that energy through combustion, you will release the energy and it will come out as thermal energy. Okay. So you've also got food. The food that you eat is uh, a chemical and you can convert that energy into the energy that you require. So it could be thermal energy or movement energy because you're going to be moving. Batteries also store chemical energy in there and we can turn that energy into electrical energy that's useful for us. So that's coming on to electrical energy. So electrical energy is the flow of charge. So charge is positive or negative charge and if it carries energy on it, in joules and as it flows, uh, that'll be the electric current. That is the uh, flow of electrical energy. Uh, the higher an object goes, if an object goes higher and higher and higher, which we'll look at in more detail in the next lesson, uh, it's gravitational potential energy. So this word potential means it's got the ability to hold something there. So chemical energy, we also call potential energy, chemical potential energy, there's a store of chemicals there, store of energy that can be released into something else. Gravitational potential energy is as an object gets higher and higher and higher, it gains more gravitational potential energy. So an airplane in the sky, the higher it is, the more gravitational potential energy it has. Uh, if you're uh, skiing and you're jumping, ski jumping, then you can, the higher you go, the more gravitational potential energy you have. The higher you rock climb, the greater the gravitational potential energy. Elastic potential energy too. Elastic potential energy is the store of energy in an elastic band or a spring. So as you stretch that spring, you can feel the tension in there. It's got a store of elastic potential energy. So there are many different types of energy that we just talked about. So we, we just went through them individually, thermal, light, sound, elastic, gravitational, kinetic, electrical, chemical, and nuclear. Now, you need to be able to think of some examples of each of those. Where would you see them? Okay, so here's a table. Uh, if you pause the video now, you can draw out a table just like this. You can write in one column, the heading is the type of energy that we just talked about. So if you list the energies that we've already mentioned, can you write down maybe three examples and possibly what that particular type of energy does? So if you pause the video, draw out the table, fill in the table, and once you've done, you can press play again and we'll go through some examples. Now, here's some examples that you may have had. So for instance, heat, heat energy is when um, the energy flows from a hot object to somewhere else. So we can either radiate that heat out. Now come back to this idea of heat because heat and thermal energy aren't exactly the same thing. Kinetic energy, anything that's moving, for instance, a football or a car or, or a cheetah is moving. So that's kinetic energy. Nuclear energy is released from uh, nuclear reactions, for instance, in the sun, in the atomic bomb, in a hydrogen bomb, also in a nuclear reactor that you find in submarines. Um, it's within the, uh, the atom itself, in the nucleus. Sound energy is anything that gives off a noise, a sound, and it's usually from the vibrations of an object. So speakers, musical instruments, your voice. Light, any luminous object that gives out light energy, so it gives out light, so the sun, light bulbs, candles, a glow worm, any fires, they will release that light energy. Chemical energy is anything that stores uh, the energy in its chemicals and you can release the energy, for instance, the battery, the food, the uh, fuels. 
Electrical energy then is anything that's got an electrical charge flowing through it and that's going to convert uh, either chemical energy or kinetic energy and it will turn into uh, electrical energy. Gravitational potential energy is any energy that um, it gains as it gets higher and higher and higher. So, so things like an aeroplane, uh, a jumper, somebody's climbing, uh, skydiving, so on. Um, and the last one, elastic potential energy. Any object that is stretched will gain elastic potential energy. So for instance, a spring or an elastic band. So that is sort of key stage three understanding. Now we're going to take it up to your GCSE level. So when we, we've got those energy forms, but we can actually put them into two major categories, two types. They go into two sort of branches. We can have an energy store or an energy transfer. They're not exactly the same thing. So this new word that's entered our curriculum recently is this energy store. Energy can exist in a store or a transfer. Now I'm going to give you an, uh, an analogy so, so you can get your head around this. So imagine I've got a, a bucket and in that bucket, I should have an example of this bucket, but with all the closures and shutdown, you can't get any resources. So if I've got this bucket and I've got, let's say I've got a hundred batteries in this bucket, so that bucket is going to be my energy store. But if I pass that around the class, so my energy store, if you've all got, if there's 10 students in my class and you've all got a bucket, then what I can do is I can share out my hundred uh, batteries. I can give out 10 batteries to each person. So that energy has been transferred from my store to your stores which means you've all got now, I started with 100, now I've got no more batteries, but you've all got 10 each. If however, if I decided to say, right, okay, I'm gonna keep 50 of them, so that means 50 left, and I share them out equally between you, you'd all have five in each of your energy stores. And then eventually you might pass your five, you might pass maybe four of them to some of your friends, so you've down to one in your energy store, but then the other four might have gone on to four of the friends. So what's happening? The energy has been transferred from one store to another store. It's a bit like Amazon with their delivery. So in the Amazon warehouse, that will be the Amazon store where all of the energy uh, units are. And then in the, in the trucks, the Amazon Prime, they come in the, in the delivery trucks. That's transferring that energy from the energy store. And then it's coming to another store. It's bringing it to your house. So they bring you the packet of energy. That packet of energy is your energy store. So it comes to your house and now you've got that energy store. Okay. Now the thing is, those bits of batteries, if I keep spreading them out to the next person, to the next person, to the next person, to the next person, they never disappear. Okay. They're always there. And that's what we're going to talk about in our next lesson when we talk about the conservation of energy. Energy can't be created. It can't be destroyed. It just goes from one place to another place. So it goes from one store to another store. So it's always somewhere, it always exists somewhere. When it's in one place and there's a lot of it, you can see it, you can feel it, there's loads of it there. But what happens to this energy is it dissipates, it spreads out and it carries on spreading out, going from one store to another store to another store. And it's being transferred, okay? So energy store is where you can, the energy is in a particular place. And when this energy is moving from one place to another place to get to the another energy store, that energy is being transferred and there could be another type of energy, another form of energy where that energy is being uh, transferred. So using the list that you've got from your previous table, you've got a list of energies, can you draw a table and in that table, can you write down a list of energy stores, which ones will be energy stores and which ones will be an energy transfer? So if you press pause again, I'll give you a minute or two if you guys can write down a list or do it in a table, a list of what you think are energy stores and what you think are energy transfers. So if you press pause now and we'll restart. So what you should have then in your list is some of these. Now some of these we haven't actually mentioned so far, so they might be a bit tricky, but these, for your exams, you need to memorize which types of energy, which forms of energy are energy stores and which forms are energy transfers. So let's start off with stores. An energy store is where something, something will have that energy. So 
GPE, also known as gravitational potential energy. Now, in your exams, you can also write GPE in the form of capital E with a little subscript, with a little P at the bottom showing it's a type of potential energy. So GPE, gravitational potential energy store, so as you get higher and higher and higher, you've got a gravitational potential energy store. Kinetic energy, so if the car is moving, as it's moving, there is kinetic energy store in that car. Now here's the thing between these two guys that always confuses people. Thermal energy is the thermal energy store, but heating, heat or heating, is the transfer of that thermal energy store. So let me give you an example. If I get my mug, I just had a coffee, and in my coffee, my coffee is nice and hot, but in my coffee, the coffee has thermal energy store. So in the, in the mug, in the coffee itself, there is a thermal energy store. However, that coffee doesn't stay hot forever. So in the next 20 minutes or so, my coffee's gonna cool down. Well, where is that energy going? That energy is going into its surroundings. It's what we know as dissipating. It's dissipating, it's spreading out across the air, the environment. Now that is the heating effect. The heat is being transferred. It's being transferred to the surrounding as heat energy or heating. So thermal energy store is the energy in that cup, within that coffee, and the heating effect is the energy that heats that thermal energy store that's transferring to other places. So for instance, if I've got my mug sitting here in front of my TV, the thermal energy store will transfer as heat and it will go into the TV or into the curtains and heat up the curtains a tiny, tiny amount, but we say that energy dissipates. And um, we also have a chemical energy store, so a, a, mar a marathon, it's now called Snickers, marathon is, it shows you how my age. Um, a chocolate bar will have a chemical store, chemical potential energy store, or any food will. Nuclear energy is the energy inside atoms, so inside the, the, the nucleus, elastic potential energy store as well. When you stretch the elastic band, it's got the potential to spring back. So if you think about bow and arrow, as you pull it, it's got elastic potential energy store. If I let go of that, uh, this, the bow, it will move with great force and have my projectile, my arrow, fly with lots and lots of kinetic energy. It's transferring that energy. Magnetism. So here's a strange one. Magnetism, has, it's the, the magnet has the ability to attract or uh, repel, push things away or attract them towards it. So we call that a magnetic energy store. And electrostatic is where if you rub two uh, surfaces together, if you get two non-metals and you rub them together, what can happen is a charge can build up and we call that an electrostatic uh, energy store. So electrostatics, you probably all rubbed a balloon on your hair, made your hair stand up wind, or put the balloon, stuck it to a wall. Um, that's to do with electrostatics. Now transfer them, the, elect uh, the energy transfer, light is going from one place to another place. It's electromagnetic energy. So when we come to look at the electromagnetic spectrum, electromagnetic energy is being transferred from one place to another place. That is uh, light energy. So light energy is a transfer. So is sound. So you can hear me right now because the microphone is hopefully picking me up. The energy is being transferred, the sound energy from my vocal cords to the microphone and that's a transfer. And we talked about the heat. Electrical energy then is, we talked about this earlier, about the charge is flowing and each charge holds a little bit of energy and as it moves along a, a wire in an electric circuit, it's got electrical energy uh, transfer. Mechanical then, so when work is being done on something, whether I'm skipping, if I'm making a wire, go, you know, if I'm making a string go up and down, there is energy going into that system. That is mechanical energy being transferred because you're applying a force to an object. So, moving on then, some quick questions for you to try. What type of energy does a toaster use to heat bread? So, which type of energy is a toaster using to heat bread? bread. Have a think. Well, this one must be electrical energy because the electrical energy is being transferred into and it's been converted into heat energy and that heat energy is cooking the bread. Uh, what type of energy do we use when we exercise? Well, what are we using when we're exercising? Well, we're using, we're using chemical energy because it's the food that we eat and the food that we eat. So if you've had your Weetabix in the morning, um, 
the chemical energy in the Weetabix will be used and returned into kinetic energy because you're going for your jog, but also you'll be getting quite hot, so you'll be transferring some of the heat energy. Okay, so when you climb the stairs to get here, usually I'm on the top floor, what type of energy did you not produce? Well, when you were climbing up the stairs, did you produce kinetic energy? Yes, you did. Did you generate some thermal energy? Well, the thermal energy in you, did you transfer that? Yes, you did as heating. Did you gain gravitational potential energy because you went to the top floor? Yes, you did. So the one that you didn't produce was light, okay? Now, energy transfers then. Energy doesn't just exist in a store. Energy keeps going from one store to another store. So it has to get from one store to another store by being transferred. Now, here's an example then. So chemical energy in food is converted into thermal energy and kinetic energy in our bodies, just like what we talked about in uh, when we're doing exercise. Now, to finish off this lesson on energy stores and transfers, gravitational potential energy in a ball is converted into kinetic energy as it falls to the ground. But then what happens? Because that was one of our objectives. So if you'd like to chuck me the ball. So, you can see, great catching skills. Uh, so, we got the, uh, the golf ball. It's a fake golf ball, you can hear it's quite hollow. Now, if I lift this golf ball up high, the chemical energy inside of my, in me, from my, my breakfast this morning, uh, is going into the my muscles and it's lifting the ball against gravity. So I'm putting, doing work into this ball. I'm raising it so it's got more gravitational potential energy. Now, as I let it go, that ball's gravitational potential energy now will be, the gravitational potential energy store will be going into the ball's kinetic energy store because it's gonna be falling to this table. Now what happens when it hits the table? So what did you hear? You obviously heard the sound. So that energy has been transferred into sound. So that sound energy was transferred to you. But at the same time, when it hit the table, there would have been a collision and the particles in there would have vibrated. And the tiny vibrations would have caused a, a heating effect. So some of the uh, tables some of the thermal energy store would have gone into the table because even though it's a tiny, tiny, tiny amount, there would be some any thermal energy store. Uh, some of the heating effect would have happened, the particles would have vibrated, and those vibrations would have transferred some of the thermal energy into the table and into the surroundings. And that energy will be dissipating. Because if all of the energy went into this ball, then that ball should get back to the same height, but it never will because some of the energy has been transferred to the surroundings. And that's what we're gonna look at in our next lesson. We're gonna look at useful energy and wasted energy and what's happened to this energy. And then uh, we'll look at the conservation of energy. So that's the end of this lesson about energy. If it's been useful, then please watch it all, like the videos, subscribe, and then share. And hopefully this has been useful for your nights and uh, I hope you're not getting too bored at home. See you in the next video.